Are you new to using cyber green assays for qPCR or having trouble getting accurate results? Today, let's discuss how to design and optimize qPCR using cyber green assays as the detection method. First, beware of reverse transcription, RT bias. When converting RNA to cDNA, nearly all RT enzymes have the potential to introduce RT bias. When this happens, the amount of cDNA won't align with the amount in the RNA samples. You can test for RT bias by reverse transcribing two fold dilutions of a known amount of RNA, then run a qPCR standard curve for each assay and endogenous control. The standard curve should be linear with a target slope of minus 3.323. Once the cDNA is generated, make sure to use the right primers for the qPCR. You will need to use some bioinformatics to design your primers, such as a tool like SNP Masker. In general, primers should be 20 nucleotides in length with a GC content in the 30 to 70% range. The last five nucleotides at the three prime end should include no more than two G or C bases to avoid specificity issues. Finally, amplicons should be short, generally between 50 and 150 base pairs. The next step is primer validation. The objective is to find the right concentration of forward and reverse primers that will yield the most robust assay without non-specific amplification or primer dimers. This is accomplished by running multiple qPCRs with three different concentrations of forward and reverse primers in a matrix format. The appropriate range of primer concentrations is determined by the master mix. For instance, Applied Biosystems Power Up Cyber Green Master Mix works best with primer concentrations in the range of 300 to 800 nanomolar. Getting back to our experiments to optimize primer concentrations, the next step is to evaluate the CT and run melting curves, also known as a disassociation curve, for each primer concentration combination. If the disassociation curve shows primer dimers, there are two options. A. Start over and redesign the primers. B. Alter cycling temperatures to remove primer dimers. The last step in ensuring that your primer set is going to yield usable, reproducible data is to ensure the PCR efficiency is within 90 to 110%. You can do this by simply running a standard curve with at least five logs of input DNA and using the software on your instrument to calculate the PCR efficiency. If this seems too complicated, you can use pre-designed TACMAN assays instead which removes the primer design variable and ensures the best possible primer set. Once the primers are designed, experimental analysis can begin. Here's a tip. For measuring relative gene expression levels of two different samples, most researchers use what is known as the delta-delta CT method. This analysis generates relative changes from one state to the next, much like a disease state versus treatments. For more information about CyberGreen experiments, TACMAN assays, or reagents, please visit thermofisher.com slash qPCR. And if you have more questions concerning CyberGreen assays, Delta Delta CT analysis, or any other qPCR questions, remember to ask TACMAN and submit your questions on our website at thermofisher.com slash ask.